Uh, let's please welcome back uh, Gotoda-san, who um, is a repeat presenter uh, and participant at SDNA over the years. He's been steadfastly working on a variety of stacked uh, LCD displays, uh, multi-layer displays, at the National Institute of Informatics uh, in Japan. Uh, so thank you so much for making the journey here. Uh, he'll teach us now about stackable display panels for 3D. Okay, so thank you very much uh, for introducing me. Uh, my name is Gotoda from Japan, and uh, the title of my talk is Constructing Stackable Multiscopic Display Panels Using Micro Lenses and Optical Waveguides. So uh, let me explain the background, why, why I'm interested in such kind of topics. Uh, the reason is quite simple, that uh, as everybody knows, uh, autostereoscopic displays, such as lenticular displays or um, uh, integral imaging displays, suffer from the same uh, problem, that is, the resolution of uh, reproduced views will, will be reduced as the number of views increases. And this is a fundamental problem of auto, uh, lentic, uh, lenticular or integral imaging displays. So uh, one, one way to overcome this problem is to use multiple display devices. So using multiple display devices, uh, an example of using multiple display devices can be found in a multi projector display uh, where the light fields emitted from each multiple projectors are uh, integrated into a single light field um, uh, uh, in the in the integration, uh, a double lenticular screen is used. This is one way. Uh, another way, another possible way, maybe, maybe to stack multiple display devices, and that is my uh, ma major research concerns. So stacking itself is a very simple procedure. Now, anything can be stacked. Uh, the, the only constraint in stacking uh, display devices is that uh, the device should be almost transparent and, that, that, and the device does not absorb any light or scatter light. These are the only constraints, I think, uh, whether the device is stackable or not. So uh, Ricky crystal panels uh, exhibit such properties so uh, by using a stack of liquid, liquid crystal panels uh, with a light source, omnidirectional light source, or directional light source, uh, one can construct a, a stereoscopic display, such as much layer display. The construction is quite simple, but uh, unfortunately, the capabilities of such displays is, is not so much, is not so fascinating. So uh, displays constructed in such a way are not good at, sometimes good, but in most cases are not so good at representing complex scenes or uh, scenes containing highly specular objects. So I'm always considering, um, is it possible to stack uh, multiple uh, display devices consisting of multiscopic pixels, such as pixels in a, uh, pixels in a lenticular displays or pixels in a integral imaging displays. So pixels in multi-layer displays are not multiscopic. Uh, I think, in my point of view, I think this seems to limit the capabilities of multi-layer displays and pixels in lenticular, parallax barrier, integral imaging displays are all multiscopic, but, but uh, I think stacking such pixels seems to be very, very difficult because lenses or barriers uh, associated with such uh, panels with scatter or absorb light. So in my presentation today, I'd like to present uh, 
design of microscopic displays, panels, um, that may be a partial answer to the previous question, that is, is it possible to stack uh, multiple um, panels consisting of microscopic pixels? That may be a partial answer. But unfortunately, I'm, the design is so simple, but unfortunately, I'm, I'm I'm unable to find a good manufacturer to, uh, to produce such displays. So I'd like to uh, explain the main idea here, uh, try to, trying to find, uh, trying to, yeah. So today I, I, I cannot uh, show actual implementation of such displays, but I can explain the ideas. And briefly, it's an um, improvement of double lenticular screens. So uh, here, here is an illustration of a multi projector display consisting of arrays of multiple projectors and a double lenticular screen. And viewer is looking at the light field emitted from the projectors through the double lenticular screen. The screen itself does not contain any optically controllable objects. Uh, it's simply a cons uh, it, it is simply constructed. Uh, it, 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 it consists of lenticular uh, lenslets, lenticular sheets, and possibly with a diffuser inside. And I, I one can consider a modification of double lenticular screen, uh, so putting in between uh, lenticular, lenticular sheets, uh, one can consider uh, sandwiching uh, liquid crystal panels in between. And uh, liquid crystal panels can modify light, or uh, yeah, can modify light, so, uh, so using such devices, one can, uh, one can uh, improve, for, uh, one can change the light, uh, light, the light field from the, from the input light field to the light output light field. Uh, in this example, uh, one can put inside yeah, um, color filter here and colorizing this monochromatic, monochromatic image to a color image. And this is the optics of the moderator uh, in this example. Uh, ideally, uh, any light incoming to the uh, moderator, we, any, any light incoming to the moderator, we go in this, in this way. That is, uh, any pair also, or any set of parallel, parallel rays of light, we go parallel in this direction. But unfortunately, this is not always the case. So light is always scattered around this point and uh, spread in the, in, as shown in this figure. So I'm, I'm always thinking how to avoid such kind of phenomena and arrived at this idea that using optical waveguides uh, instead of a simple diffuser, one can control the flow of light. That is my basic idea. So here you see that uh, 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 lens rates, arrays of micro lenses can be seen uh, on the bottom. Here is also, here also an array of micro lenses. And in the middle, we have a liquid crystal layer and um, between the lens rates, micro lens arrays, micro lens arrays, and liquid crystal array, uh, there are a bunch of uh, waveguides, which is actually uh, a cylindrical fibers. So let, let us look at what happens if light comes from, from above. So let us assume that uh, parallel rays of light uh, will come to this range rate, come to this range rate. Uh, e each figure shows parallel rays of light uh, stri stri in slightly different angle. 
uh, the, they uh, basically they uh, the fork, they they are fork, uh, the parallel rays of light will be focused at a single point, and then uh, these rays we enter the wave guys. Now uh, the the wave guys is actually a fiber uh, around which. Uh, it's, it's made of glass or made of acre, and, uh, and uh, surrounding this fiber, there, there's only air. So uh, the light entering this fiber will be totally reflected, and without any loss, of, without any loss, without any loss. So it, light travels. Uh, uh, Downward in this way, in this figure. Of course, uh, there are reflections uh, on the walls. And then, uh, he, uh, after passing through a uh, uh, liquid crystal layer, and uh, after the wave guide is over, uh, it spreads and uh, hit the surface of this of the lens array. And refracted. So, in summary, uh, parallel rays of light will come here and go through the waveguides and leave the, wave, leave the lenses. And in many cases, uh, parallel rays of light will go parallel at the bottom. Uh, in some cases, it, it spreads. But um, how light leaves the lower uh, lenses, look, uh, look, it seems that the way the light, laser of light leaves the la lower lens seems to seems that almost most of them are being parallel to each other. But this is not perfect, but uh, better than the previous design, I think. And in this design, it is quite important to keep this intermediate layer as thin as possible because it's a source of scattering the light. And uh, parallel rays of light coming from above will uh, go through approximately the same portion on the LC ray, liquid crystal layer. And this, is, this phenomena is quite similar to those occurring in integral imaging system. So the entire optics is a, a little bit complicated, but we can simply understand that something goes here, comes here, and refracted, and goes in this way. So we may understand the basic basic uh, behavior of this panel, like this way. So light comes here and changes its direction in this way, and changes its direction in this way, and so forth. So the, the light zigzags through the stacks of panels. Now the question is, is it really useful or not? Yeah, six minutes. So uh, we can use a single panel here, and this is a uh, one-layer display, and this is a, this is this display behaves just like a uh, integral imaging display. Uh, we can put two layers, and light coming in this way in, in, in this, along this path, we we uh, we gather here, so. The pixel on this panel uh, is the, the pixel on this panel represent points floating uh, at this space. So it is you can think of as if uh, putting a virtual plane uh, at this space on this space. And we may construct three layer this space. One layer here, another layer here, uh, yet another layer here. The distance between the first and second, and second and third, is different. 
And in this construction, a uh, pixel here represent object around here. Very diff interesting to see. Now, let me show some examples uh, using uh, numerical simulations. Four minutes, yeah. This is a result uh, obtained using only a one-layer display. So this is, the, this is a example, this kind of results can be obtained using integral imaging system. So in this kind of uh, simulation, in this kind of uh, display, uh, it's very important to put whether the panel, uh, the position of the panel is very important. So in the left figure, we have a panel uh, uh, in front of the display, in front of, the, in front of this object. And here, we have a panel uh, um, further away from the viewer. So depending on the panel, on the position of the panel, we see that uh, we see sharp region and broad region, or sharp and broad. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. And using two layers, uh, one can have two uh, sharp regions, like this way. So front and back are also all, uh, all, all sharp. And three layers can improve a little bit more. Uh, so putting one layer here, uh, one panel here, another panel here, and another panel here, and there's slight improvement from two layer display to three layer display. And uh, all the simulation is in three dimensional. So here are another examples. Uh, three dimensional view can be obtained and uh, these results are all obtained by three-layer display. So, to summarize my talk, uh, I presented a design, only a design, of constructing stackable multiscopic panels. Uh, this is actually consists of micro-range arrays and optical waveguides and exhibited a somewhat better optical properties than the previous constructions. And uh, examples of two-layer and three-layer configurations are shown, uh, but you may think of, so, but uh, I think stacking more than three panels seems to require careful, very, very careful arrangement of panels. So how much distance between each panel should be, it must be carefully planned. And implementation of this panel uh, design itself is very simple. Uh, building blocks are only optical fibers and yeah, uh, micro lens arrays. Both are available, but uh, constructing such objects in this way is a very difficult problem, as far as I know. As far as I know, in Japan, so. Thank you very much.